All right, everyone, this is your quiz review for sections 2.1 through 2.4. All right, you're going to study this packet tonight, and uh, this will be the contents on your quiz tomorrow. If you notice, I've broken it down by each subcategory. All right, lesson 2.1 was on patterns, finding patterns, inductive reasoning, counterexamples. 2.2 is on your conditional statements, writing your conditional given the hypothesis and the conclusion, writing the converse, writing the inverse, and the contrapositive. 2.3 was on your biconditionals, your biconditional statements, and what is a good definition. And then 2.4 is deductive reasoning, your law of detachment, and law of syllogism from yesterday's lesson. All right, so the first thing you're going to do on your quiz is you're going to have to find patterns. Okay, you got to identify the next three terms in the pattern. Well, you got to use, you know, your inductive reasoning and we got to look from one term to the next to find some sort of pattern here. Well, I see from 12 to 24 it could either be times 2 or plus 12. Okay, it's one or the other. Now, 24 times 2 is 48, but your next term is 36, right? So times 2 is not correct. If you see here, we have a pattern of plus 12s going all the way through. So 60 plus 12 is 72, 72 plus 12 is 84, and 84 plus 12 is your 96. Okay. If you take a look at your next one, we go from 90 to 71 to 54 to 39, and we have to find some sort of pattern here. And we can't divide, so this has to be subtraction. 90 minus 19 makes 71. 71 minus 17 makes 54. 54 minus 15 makes 39. So your next subtraction would be 13. 39 minus 13 gives you 26. 26 minus 11 gives you 15, and 15 minus 9 gives you 6. Okay, so your pattern here was that the subtraction is decreasing by 2 each time. All right. Well, now if we look, we go from 2 to 6. Well, it could be plus 4, but 6 plus 4 is definitely not 24. So this could be times three. Six times four is 24. 24 times five is 120. 120 times six is 720. 720 times seven is 5,040. And 5,040 times eight is 40,320. Okay, so this time, you're just increasing the number you multiply by by one. Okay, if we take a look here, we have 20,000 going down to 10,000, 10,000 going down to 5,000. So that's division by two each time. So what is 5,000 divided by two? It's 2,500. 2,500 divided by 2 is 1,250. And 1,250 divided by 2 gives you 625. Okay, these next ones, using inductive reasoning when we're given patterns. Well, I see A, B, C, then A, B, C for the letter, and your term is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, going up by 1 every time. So if you notice, we have a cycle, A, B, C, A, B, C. So there's a cycle here. So we'll say this is the first cycle. Here's your second cycle. And the pattern is going to repeat itself. So the way I like to do it is write out A, B, C and list the number term that the letter A has. So this would be one, it would be four, the next one would be seven, and it would be 10, 
right? B is 2 and 5, and then it would be 8, right? And 11, and C would be 3 and 6 and 9 and 12. And if we did one more row, A would be 13, B would be 14, C would be 15. Okay, so what they want is the 13th term in the sequence. Well, by filling out our chart here, we've already found the 13th term would be A. The 60th term, though, I'm not going to write out 60 numbers. There's no way. Okay, but if you notice, look at C. We have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. These are multiples of 3. Okay, 2, 5, 8, 11 is one less than a multiple of 3. And A happens to be 2 less than multiples of 3. So the question is, is 60 2 less than a multiple of 3, 1 less than a multiple of 3, or is it a multiple of 3? Well, 3 times 20 is 60, so it is a multiple of 3, which means it would be C. Counter examples. If a student is taking notes, then they are using a pencil. A counter example offers another solution aside from the one provided. So they don't have to be using a pencil. If you're taking notes, what could you be using? You could be using a pen. You could be typing on a computer. Okay? There's multiple ways that you could be, you know, taking notes, not just using a pencil. You could be recording audio. If you are exercising, then you are on the treadmill. Well, you don't have to be on the treadmill to exercise. You could be biking. You could be running outside. You could be lifting weights. Okay. If you are smart, you will pass your classes. Well, that's not necessarily true either. Just because you're smart doesn't mean that you completed your work. You could have incomplete assignments. You could have poor attendance. Okay, those are just some reasons. If it is September, then you are in school. Well, a counterexample would be, what about Saturdays or Sundays? Two point two. Your conditional statements. Your conditional statement is an if-then statement, including a hypothesis and a conclusion. Remember, your hypothesis is P. Your conclusion is Q. Your hypothesis: there is four feet of snow. Your conclusion: it is a snow day. So, if you're going to write your conditional statement, if P, then Q, it would read: if there is four feet of snow then it is a snow day. Converse means to flip. Inverse means to negate. Contrapositive means to flip and negate. So your converse, you're flipping the conditional statement. If it is a snow day, then there is four feet of snow. Your inverse if there is not four feet of snow, then it is not a snow day. Your contrapositive, if it is not a snow day, then there is not four feet of snow. Biconditional statements, okay, is a statement that combines the conditional statement and its converse. 
Okay, both need to be true. Okay, biconditional statements have an arrow going in both directions from P to Q, and that reads P if and only if Q. So here's your conditional. If the angle measures 90 degrees, then it is a right angle. Is it true? Yes, that is true. The converse of the conditional is if the angle is a right angle, then its measure is 90. That is also true. Since both statements, your conditional and your converse are true, you can write a biconditional statement. Your biconditional statement is the angle measures 90 if and only if it is a right angle. All right, you're gonna be able to need to write biconditional statements on your quiz. Okay. Good definitions. We talked about this. Definitions that are good, they classify, they quantify, and they do not have counterexamples. Okay? An acute angle is smaller than an obtuse angle. Now that may be true, but is it a good definition? The answer is no. Because right angles are also smaller than obtuse. So how can we make this a good definition? An acute angle is an angle that is less than 90 degrees. Okay, why don't you go ahead and try this one on your own and I'll check it when you submit your work. The law of detachment and the law of syllogism, these are what we practiced yesterday, okay? So if P then Q is true and P is true, then Q must be true, okay? If the hypothesis of a conditional is true, then the conclusion is also true. If the students fail this, uh, this quiz, then Mr. P will cry in his car. Mr. P's seventh period class failed the quiz, so we can com conclude that Mr. P will cry in his car. The law of syllogism, if P then Q is true, and Q then R is true, then P then R is true. If it is warm in class, then Mr. P will open a window. If Mr. P opens the window, then a student will escape the class. You conclude, if it is warm in class, then a student will escape the class. Okay, so make sure you fill this one in. And that is all the contents on your quiz. Remember, if you need to review any further, you can go to my website, sites.google.com slash view slash shs dash geo dash apps. Okay, if you need any further review, visit here and review the lessons and the videos that I've made for this entire unit. Thanks for watching.